My name is Lawrence Stanley Brown. I was registered in the draft in December of uh, 1942. And my uh, um, enlistment features that I volunteered for the Navy, although it was a draft, I was cited as a volunteer. <laughs> it, you know, I was just a kid and I was waiting for it. I knew it would happen. I was a torpedoman striker. I was a first class seaman striking for to be a torpedoman. And I was a lookout. And I was a helmsman and I operated the stern and bow planes and the pumps which balanced the ship out. We would pump water fore and aft or sideways in order to balance the ship, keep it on an even keel. And those were my duties and of course uh, studies with the uh, first class torpedoman who instructed us and further and we had to uh, examine the torpedoes and check them out. Uh, electric torpedoes, it checked the electrolyte in the batteries and so forth. The steam torpedoes were, were pretty well set when you got them. They had a tower 120 feet high called a diving tower. And uh, by gradual uh, acclimation, they would lower you into the water with a mums and lung. At the bottom, it was 100 feet deep, and we'd go in at the bottom and go into a chamber, equalize the pressure, duck out of the chamber into the tank, and go up a line, holding onto a line that had a knot every six feet. And you would pause for a count of two every six feet. And that would allow the nitrogen dissolved in your blood to uh, recombine, and at the time you would reach the surface. Prior to this, they put you in a pressure chamber to see if you're, you had any problems bearing 50 pounds of pressure. And I was assigned a submarine, number 325, the USS Blower. You wonder what's gonna be down there, and you get in and you go around and you get up and down, and you're up and down the ladders and in and out of the hatches and going around back and forth through the hatches, through the passageways. And pretty soon it's old home week. It's natural. It's home. And that was for me. Now, for a lot of people, not. Okay. I like this had an attitude of all the people and everything about it. And uh, I figured it was better. If you went out in a submarine, we had submarine losses, and the men did not come back. But they did not come back with holes in them, with wound, with parts missing. They came back essentially whole, or not at all. That appealed to me. I had no fear of death. We arrived at Key West, Florida and operated for two weeks with a sound fleet, uh, doing evasive tactics. They seeking to uh, find us and we seeking to evade them. And they had a small depth charge, I don't know, it was some little small explosive they would drop on us if they found us. And they did a couple of times, but uh, and it was interesting to hear that little explosion because we were all made aware of the fact that the enemy had depth charges which had very large explosions. There we were assigned a ship to escort us to the Panama Canal. On the way to the Panama Canal, in the morning, in the darkness, we were rammed by our escort vessel. They were supposed to zigzag ahead of us and uh, somehow or other, the helmsman came right back on us, struck us in the bow, ruptured the bow buoyancy tank, and we were kind of down by the head, and scraped alongside the ship. I was starboard lookout at the time, and I saw the ship and reported it to the deck officer. Ship dead ahead! <laughs> oh, man. It had a lot of... We coming in, pressure, and it was chewing out ends of the 
the summer of the ship surface vessel, the escort vessel. And the top part of it was getting closer. So I climbed up in the shears. That, those are the towers between the, above the uh, conning tower. They call them shears. I climbed up in between them and it went by about that far away and ripped off the, the railing around the cigarette deck. So uh, it was close. If I'd have stayed there, I might have been struck. Went on back and uh, tore one blade off of the starboard screw and bent the shaft, the, the drive shaft. We found that out later, of course. Uh, we were escorted back to Key West. They put us up on the Marine Railway, drew us up, examined it, found out what was going on, sent us back to New London, Connecticut for repairs. The repairs were done and we, re we de departed uh, New London uh, in November and sailed directly to the Panama Canal alone. No escort vessel. On the way, we were fairly close to Bermuda. We went away out into the Atlantic. Uh, we could actually see the lights of Bermuda as we went by. And as we went along, this particular night, moonlight night, uh, PBM, Puerto Bomber Martin, flew over us. And as I looked up and saw it, the bomb bay doors were opening. Well, it went on ahead and turned and came back at us. It would go into bomb us. However, the signalman got the proper coded signals up to it and it closed its bomb bay doors and went on. Um, we sailed on down with a further incident to the Panama Canal. The veterans have a torpedo. They have a klaxon on it, which is, it goes like this, ooga, ooga, ooga. That's a diving alarm. And they would sound the diving alarm. Well, you cleared the bridge. You got off, you went down the hatches, and if you're the last one, you closed the hatch. And, um, then uh, the uh, personnel inside were checking gauges and so forth and putting pressure in the boat to see that we were sealed up. When we arrived at Pearl Harbor, I was wearing glasses and I wanted a second pair. So I went to the base dispensary and ordered a second pair and paid for them. I had to pay for them. They wouldn't give them to me. And, uh, in a few days, the captain called me up and said, Brown, I have an order here from the Admiral to disqualify you five human submarines because you're wearing glasses. Ugh. Some Admiral got a hold of the thing and didn't want anyone on the ship wearing glasses. <laughs> no, I couldn't fight it, that's what it was. It was a, one of the great disappointments of my life because uh, the thing was what we call a cakewalk, you know, it was just a dream for a young man who was willing to serve his country and had the very best possible opportunity. I loved it. The, transferred me to Pleasanton uh, Camp Shoemaker was the name of it. It was a naval facility for separation. And it took three days and they debriefed me on everything and I was discharged from the United States Navy uh, on uh, March the 26th, 1946. And uh, it was uh, an adventure.